I don't know what you all did for this past Labor Day weekend, but I was at a wedding. And uh, my cousin, um, a distant cousin of mine, uh, recently got married. Now, my family is Nigerian, and so um, I had the privilege of being one of the bridesmaids in the traditional Nigerian wedding, and so I had a dress sewn and colors, and it was beautiful. Anyways, anytime we get together, it's always like a little reunion, and especially a wedding. You call family from far and near, folks you hadn't seen in ages, and of course, there were children running around all over the place, right? And children that I hadn't met before because in the time that we had been away from each other as family, new children came. <laughs> so lots of children uh, uh, running around at the wedding. And every time when you get together with family, I'm sure this has happened to you as well, the reactions are always the same, right? Oh my goodness, you're so big now, <laughs> right? Or, or, wow, kid number three, that's amazing, right? Um, or high school, and you look up at them and they're like, really, the last time I saw you, you were like four. Um, and it just, you know, puts a, puts a date on you for your age and <laughs> reminds you that time truly does fly by, right? One of my younger uh, another distant cousin. Um, the last memory that I have of her was me as a 10, 10 11 year old um, giving her a three year old a shower in the tub. And uh, I met her again, and she's now doing an MBA, <laughs> um, you know, at some prestigious school. And I just said to myself, wow, right, time uh, really flies. And of course, you know, everyone anticipates and expects children that, you know, that children will one day become adults and, you know, live their own lives and navigate their own journey. But when the reality actually hits you, we often find ourselves surprised. Like, wow, you know, you're, you're, you're growing. <laughs> With children, there are a few things we can expect that happens in their experience. And one thing in particular is what we'll be focusing on today. And so this particular idea is something we know for sure that will take place in their life's journey to adulthood. In the book of 1 John, the apostle John is, is speaking to new believers in Asia Minor. And he's giving them this pastoral counsel, right, for, for their newfound faith experience with early Christianity. And as he's sharing with them through this letter, he repeats certain phrases. He repeats children of God and God's children and little children um, a number of times throughout the first three chapters. And the use of the term children or little children or God's children, it's definitely a term of endearment, but also it's a term that implies a certain level of expectation. And so in counseling these new believers in this letter, John reminds them that most people don't expect for children to be perfect, but we do expect them to grow. We don't expect them to be perfect, but we do expect them to grow. They grow out of habits, they grow out of trends, they grow out of music tastes and fashion styles, they grow out of clothes and ideas and beliefs about the world and beliefs about themselves. And we expect that because one of the fundamental realities of being a child or being a human <laughs> is the experience of growth. And God feels the same way about us as believers. When I was um, younger, I was a thumb sucker. Any thumb suckers in here? <laughs> You're a self soother. <laughs> um, and, you know, that was my way of, you know, uh, keeping everything in the world at bay, you know, or at least keeping my little world uh, at bay. And I'm 100% certain that my mother did not expect me to suck my thumb well into adulthood. <laughs> um, she expected me to grow out of that. And so to expedite that process, 
She promised me 25 cents a day for every day I didn't suck my thumb. Still waiting for my money. <laughs> And eventually, right, soon enough, uh, with time, fortunately, I grew out of the habit, right? But the truth is, is that as we mature, as we change, we tend to leave behind things that no longer resonate with our present state or experience. And this is the same expectation with the children of God. God's expectation for his children is to grow, to mature, to change. And verse 2, the phrase says, What we will be has not yet appeared, but we know that when he appears, we shall be like him, because we shall see him as he is. Um, those of you who, who ha have had young children or had children, um, in the moment when you had them, you knew that who your child would be or who they would become at the end of their experience wasn't yet manifested. What was in front of you wasn't exactly who they'd be as, at, you know, as time went on. And, you know, the change hasn't fully happened or fully developed yet with little children. And we can't fast forward into the future, per se, and see the ending of the outcome of a child's life or, you know, if you have children in your child's life. It is very much the opposite of the curious case of Benjamin Button, if you know that movie, which is the story of a, a man who was birthed and aged backwards. <laughs> so he was birthed old, and then he got younger and younger as time went on. But the difference with the children of God is that John says that he actually does know the ending point. Because when God appears for the second time, when we see him face to face, he says that we will be like him. And this is the slow work of internal change and transformation. Where your desires and your motivations begin to change, becoming more and more in harmony with Jesus. John says that right now, who we are, who we're going to be, hasn't happened yet, or who, where we'll land. But by trust in God and the work of his spirit in your life, you can be sure that there is an arrival point, and that there will be an arrival point. A committed relationship with God will produce a transformation of character, of thought, of motives, and actions that are in harmony with Jesus. You become an individual who manifests the fruit of the Spirit of God. Love, joy, mercy, peace, goodness, faithfulness, kindness, right? Self-control, I need more of that. And no two children have the same journey, right? They all look different, full of ups and downs, successes and failures, hope and despair. I mean, we can just look at all of the stories in the Bible of all of these supposedly great people who had some very interesting trajectories, uh, uh, life trajectories, right? But scripture says that regardless of how irregular the path, whether up, down, flatlined, right? If you stay connected, the arrival point is the same. We will be like him. The beauty of the good news of Jesus is just that, an experience of growth, the hope of change and transformation, and it culminates at the arrival of Jesus Christ. I had a friend who would say, stick with me, kid, you'll go places. <laughs> I'm sure it's uh, a quote from some movie they watched, right? <laughs> it sounds like something familiar, but you don't really know where it came from. <laughs> And so, I like that saying, but I'll repackage it a little bit. If you stick with God, you'll never be the same. May God bless you in your life journey, and may God bless you as you grow to be more like him.